Good day everyone! My name is Teacher Claire. Welcome to another lesson on assessment of learning. In our previous lesson, we talked about item analysis given the raw data. We also learned that item analysis refers to the process of investigating the student's response to each item of the test. An item that has desirable characteristics can be retained and those with undesirable characteristics can either be revised or rejected. Likewise, I presented the various preliminary steps in doing item analysis. First, we rank the scores of the students from highest to lowest score. Second, we select and identify the top 27% performing group and the bottom 27% performing from the total takers. Third, we set aside the remaining 46% because they will not be used for item analysis. Fourth, we tabulate the number of students in the upper group and the lower group based on the selected choice per item. Today, we will be discussing the item analysis based on the given table. The learning objective for this lesson is to demonstrate skills on how to compute the index difficulty and discrimination index. Before we will discuss how item analysis is done, we need to understand the three criteria that determines the desirability and undesirability of an item based from Conception 2016, which are as follows. The difficulty of an item, discriminating power of an item, and effectiveness of alternatives. First, let us discuss item difficulty or difficulty index. This pertains to the proportion of the number of students in the upper and lower group who answered an item correctly. By simply looking at the table, the lower the difficulty index, the higher is its level of difficulty. Take note that a desired index of difficulty must not be lower than 0.8. For instance, in this problem, we are tasked to solve the difficulty index of an item. To solve this, we have the formula di equals to r divided by n, where r is the total number of students who got the correct response, and n is the total number of students who took the test. Substituting the value, we have 45 divided by 75, which is equal to 0.6. So based on our table, the item has a moderate level of difficulty. Next, we have the discrimination index denoted as DS. Discrimination index is the difference of the proportion between the students in the upper group who got the correct response and the proportion of the students in the lower group. So when we say an item must discriminate, it simply means that a test can differentiate between low and high performing students. To solve for the discrimination index, we use the formula ds equals pu minus pl over n, where pu is the proportion of the number of students in the upper group who got the correct response, pl is the proportion of the number of students in the lower group who got the correct response, and n is the total number of takers. So let's examine this table. In the table, our correct option is letter C. Looking at the result, we can see that the proportion of students who got an item right in the UG or upper group is higher than the proportion of the lower group. This indicates a positive discrimination. For an item to be considered as good item, it must have a positive discrimination index. This suggests that the knowledge gained by the students enabled them to select the correct answer. On the contrary, if the proportion of the students who got an item right in the lower group is greater than the students from the upper group, then we have a negative discrimination index. This means that it has a poor item validity and that the upper group is misled by item ambiguity. In this case, we must reject the item. 
However, if the same number of high and low achievers make the correct response, we say that it has a zero discrimination. This suggests that the item is either too easy or the item is ambiguous. So let us solve for the index of discrimination. Now substituting the values to the formula, we have 26, which is the total number of students who get the correct response from the upper group, minus 15. We divide it to 56, which is the sum of the test takers from UG or upper group and lower group, which is 28 plus 28, that makes it 56. Hence, the answer is 0 0.20. Looking at the table, the item is considered as non-discriminating or fair item that needs revision. For the index of difficulty, here's the formula. The I is equal to R plus N. As mentioned earlier, R is the total number of correct response, so we can we add the correct responses from the upper group and lower group. That is 26 plus 15 equals 41. Then we divide it by 56, which is the total take first. The answer for this is 0 0.73. This time, allow me to present the table from Regani 2008. So if our index of difficulty is easy and our DS is non-discriminating, then the item is considered poor and must be rejected. The decision is to reject the item with the justification that it is unreasonable to retain an easy item that cannot differentiate high from low performing students. Finally, we have the last, which is the effectiveness of alternatives. Others call it as destructor analysis. This is usually done to find out which destructors or incorrect but plausible options were effective or ineffective in a particular item. It must be noted that a destructor which no one chooses means it's obviously an incorrect answer. Hence, to consider an item good, the item must have destructors that attract more people from the lower group than that of the upper group. Otherwise, it is an ambiguous item. This time, we will be showing you the different exercises to test your level of understanding. Some of this will be included in your final exam. For our first set of questions, we have this. Here's the second set of questions. And our last set of exercises. So here's my references. So that's all for our lesson on item analysis. If you want to download all answers and its corresponding solutions, just click the link in this video description. Thank you for watching. And see you in my next video. Once again, this is Teacher Claire.